of Cain created the Ten Rings, how Ant-Man 3 secretly connects to see the screen across the stage, but it doesn't check this out. What is it? A beacon. We're sending a message. A message to where? Welcome back, Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy, and I want to talk to you about Kang's rings in Quantumania. I mean, we all see it, right? These rings and these rings look the same. Now, I know, this theory's been around since the first Ant-Man 3 trailer, but after Quantumania revealed the function of Kang's rings, we have to revisit this connection between these rings and the Ten Rings, and how the rings also connect to Ms. Marvel's bangle. All of these circular artifacts have a huge role in the multiverse saga, and we think we know how it all connects. One ring to rule them all. All right, let's start by explaining the similarities between Kang's rings and the Ten Rings. Kang's chair is a multiversal ship, and with it he can travel anywhere in space and time, meaning multiversal travel and time travel. Now the machine is powered by a multiversal engine core, this little orange orb, and it's surrounded by interlocking rings. And it looks like it's powered by quantum energy. Kang's chair is also surrounded by rings, which are bigger and glow with white light. Finally, there are the giant rings carved into the big structure in Kang's quantum city. The entire structure seems to be a bigger version of the chair. And those giant rings look like the ten rings. They glow with blue energy that's similar to when Wen Wu wore the rings. Blue is also the color of Kang's energy, armor, and weapons. So without the core, he is powerless. Meaning that Kang weaponized the multiversal core and he's drawing energy from the core itself. The same way that Wen Wu drew his energy from the rings. Now, the ring's energy changes to orange when Shang-Chi wears them. This orange energy is also inside the engine core. When Scott goes inside the core, there's another ring sphere that glows with orange energy. And when Scott is in there, he begins splitting into countless versions of himself because the core creates a probability storm. This is because the core is giving off this multiversal energy. And this sphere also looks exactly like the ten rings when Shang-Chi airbends them into a sphere shape. So what I'm getting to is that the rings draw on quantum energy. Do you guys just put the word quantum in front of everything? The quantum realm is very important to the multiversal saga, so it will make sense that these rings are powered by quantum energy. So the ten rings and Kang's rings are all the same. Now it's possible that the ten rings are a slightly different variation of Kang's rings from another universe. The multiverse is filled with Kang variants, and each one of them looks slightly different from the other. They are all multiversal travelers, so it's likely they all possess their own ringed machines. So the ten rings could belong to a different Kang variant who left them on Earth a long time ago. He died, and then eventually Wen Wu found these rings. Wong, Carol, and Bruce determined that the rings are very old. How long did your dad have them before he gave them to you? About a thousand years. The thermoluminescence indicates they're older than that by a lot. Yet somehow none of them had ever seen or heard anything about these rings. This could be because the rings are not relics from the ancient past, they are from the far, far future. The Kang variants are from the 31st century, so their tech is so advanced that it looks like magic to the ancient people of the 21st century. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. Shang-Chi and Wen Wu use them as weapons, but Kang discovered how to turn them into multiversal traveling machines. Notice that Kang's rings need to spin really fast to open multiversal portals. That's probably because when they spin, they become a warp drive. They bend space and time to create wormholes through the multiverse. This means that with quantum energy, the rings become this all-in-one device. Sort of like the Space Stone was weaponized by Hydra, while its real purpose was opening portals through space. So Ken created the rings? Yes, that's what I think. Now, I know there are many theories about the rings being created by the Celestials. We've thrown a few out ourselves. Now, that would make sense since they're cosmic gods that may have created the universe. And Quantumania includes some of the symbols from the Eternals. Or maybe the rings are the MCU's version of the Quantum Bands or the Nega Bands. Oh, I remember that. What are those? Those are really powerful cosmic bracelets from the comics, and we already made a couple theories about the rings being those cosmic bands. But after Quantum Mania, it seems more appropriate for the Kang variants to have created these devices. Kang is just a man. Just a man. A very smart guy who's able to shape the entire multiverse with his will and really advanced technology. Yes, science! This will make sense. Kang's engine core draws on quantum energy, and he uses it for multiversal travel. The quantum realm is heavily connected to the multiverse because it's a reality that allows for time travel. And the multiverse exists because of time travel. So this might mean that the quantum realm is a reality where all other energies in the multiverse originate from. Also, Wong explained that after Shang activated the rings, they sent a beacon. 
The rings might be sending a message to other Kang variants, like the Council of Kangs. And that beacon inside the rings looks a lot like the inside of the multiversal core. The size, the material, it all fits. On top of that, when Wong analyzes one of the rings, it separates into multiple layers of rings. And that's just like the many layers of Kang's rings. But we think there's a lot more to the rings. There's actually a lot more. The origin of the Ten Rings was never fully explained. According to legends, Wen Wu found the rings in a crater or stole them from a tomb. Wen Wu wore the rings for a thousand years. They granted him great power and made him immortal. More importantly, the rings have only been activated after Shang used them. When that happens, the blue energy of the rings turned orange. Now, Shang's mom came from Ta Le, which is another dimension, and she also turned the rings orange. So the rings, they gotta be from Ta Le. Well, apparently not. I mean, the movie never confirmed where the rings are from, but we did get a hint about the nature of their origins in Ms. Marvel. Now, the bangle was found in a temple that had the Ten Ring symbol carved into it. Now, what's interesting is the Kamala Khan's bangle is functionally and visually very similar to these Ten Rings. It's another mysterious artifact worn around the wrist. It glows with purple energy and grants its wearer abilities. Like Shang-Chi, Kamala is able to activate the bangle because her heritage is from another reality. Kamala's great-grandmother, Aisha, was from the Noor Dimension. However, the same as the rings, the bangle doesn't originate from the Noor Dimension. There's a point in the show where it sends Kamala back in time. And it also has teleportation capabilities since it makes Kamala and Carol switch places. So this connects to the bangle being a multiversal device as well. Also, Kamala's bangle is part of the set. There's another bangle somewhere out in the universe. You heard what that man from the temple said. He said we would need to. This could mean that once she gets the second bangle, she will be able to use its full power. Give me full power. Let's see. Damn it! I get full power! The fact that the Ten Ring symbol is carved into the temple where the bangle is found means that there is a connection between these two artifacts. The most telling aspect is that the bangle was wrapped around a blue arm. Blue? Wait a minute. Kind of, kind of blue. Bingo. So this is Kang's hand? After Quantum Mania, it's a really strong possibility. This hand likely belonged to the Kang variant that brought the Ten Rings and the Bangle to Earth. Now, as far as if this hand belongs to the Kang from Ant-Man 3 or one of his other variants, it's up in the air, who knows? But in the comics, most Kang variants share the same history. They all started as Nathaniel Richards. He traveled to ancient Egypt and became the Pharaoh Rama Tut. This is the Pharaoh Kang in the end credits scene, and Moon Knight included an Easter egg of Rama Tut, meaning that he is part of Earth 616's history. Considering that Rama Tut already exists in the timeline, he might have brought the rings from the far future. I'm from the future. I came here in a time machine that you invented. That being said, we've got a theory that it was not Rama Tut nor Kang. The variant that sent the Ten Rings and the Bengal to Earth was none other than He Who Remains. He is the Kang variant that we met in Loki. Come on, let's talk. So according to him, eons ago there was a multiversal war, a war fought by his variant. He won the war, saved reality, and created the sacred timeline, a singular universe that he protected from branching off. All I have to do is branch his both time and prevent any further branches. Now, according to He Who Remains, the war he ended will start all over again after his death. This war will take place in Avengers Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. So here's the theory. He Who Remains sent the rings and the bangle to the past to prepare the next cycle of the multiverse for the next war. This is something that happens in the comics. The multiverse keeps getting destroyed and reborn every few eons. Now, the comics version of He Who Remains isn't a Kang variant, he's some other being, but they share many similarities. They are both connected to the multiversal cycles and they created the timekeepers and the TVA. So this Kang variant is playing three-dimensional chess through time and space. Ah, hey, Laura. And here's our theory. The rings and the bangle are artifacts from the previous multiversal war that he who remains sent to the current cycle. You see, the sacred timeline was composed of the Earth-616 universe and like a few other realities. None of them are alternate universes. They are all separate dimensions. These included the quantum realm, the dark dimension, the mirror dimension, and a few others. But the two most important ones for our theory are Talo and the Nora dimension. All of these realities must have been part of the previous iteration of the multiverse before He Who Remains created the Sacred Timeline, meaning the Ten Rings, the Bangle, and Kang's Rings all originate from the previous multiverse. And when Shang-Chi and Ms. Marvel use the rings, they actually draw on multiversal energy. Also, the tech that He Who Remains and the TVA use looks very similar to quantum energy as well. With that logic, He Who Remains utilized the multiversal energy of the quantum realm to isolate Earth-616 and transform it into the Sacred Timeline. That's a lot of information to get in 30 seconds. Okay, so Ms. Marvel's bangle has a very unique ability, time travel. 
though it's less of time travel and more like a time loop. The Bengal sends Kamala to a certain point in time, the night of the partition in 1947. But Kamala cannot influence the past. It's more like she relives a moment in time that she is replaying herself. She had a role to play, and once she accomplished it, she was sent back to the present. Now, this seems to be a very random and unrelated ability for the Bengal. Now, the sacred timeline is a contained universe that functions like a time loop as well. Only, instead of being one moment in time, it contains the whole history of the universe. He who remains was in control of the flow of time up until the moment the timeline arrives at the threshold. We just crossed the threshold. The time loop begins to unravel once he who remains arrives at the threshold, almost like he accomplished his role on the timeline. Same as what happens to Kamala, only on a much smaller scale. So the Bengal created the sacred timeline? Not by itself. Kang's multiversal chair needs the rings. When the rings start spinning, they allow Kang to travel through the multiverse. So the ten rings and the Bengal could be connected that way as well. They are both separately very powerful artifacts, but combined. They draw a multiversal energy that can reshape reality. And our powers combine. So, if this theory is correct, it means that the Ten Rings and the Bengal will be crucial in moving forward in the multiversal saga. The Infinity Saga and the Stones. So why not have the Rings and the Bengal be that for the multiverse saga? The credit scene of Quantumania reveals that the Council of Kangs are coming to Earth. They aren't happy that the heroes messed with the multiverse and they plan to conquer the universe. The beacon that the Ten Rings are sending in the end of Shang-Chi could be a message to the other Kangs. The thing is, the Council are the reason why the multiverse is dying. According to Kang, his variants are playing with time like children. Their actions are causing these endless incursions. Universes are colliding, and the whole multiverse is in danger of collapsing. When explaining this to Janet, Kang showed her something that looks like the sacred timeline. It appears that the only way to save the multiverse is to create a new sacred timeline. And this is why this Kang needs to return. He has a really good motivation, so it's like a big shame if they killed him off. Why, why, why would you do that? And his supposed death is something that could easily turn into him returning throughout the multiverse. No one's ever really gone. And we examined how he could return in these two videos. So if Kane comes back, then he will be gunning for the Ten Rings and the Bangle because these relics are exactly what he needs to achieve his goals. But here's the thing. If he who remains sent those relics to the new multiversal cycle, then it must have something to do with his secret plan. This could tie into why only Shang and Kamala are able to use the full power of these artifacts. The two of them are connected to different dimensions. Realities that he who remains saved for a reason. A reason could be that he didn't want his variants to be able to access the full power of these relics. So he had them programmed to only activate for people from those other realities. This makes Shang and Kamala two of the most important beings in the multiverse because their artifacts might be the key to saving everyone. If they achieve the full multiversal energy of the rings and the bangle, then maybe they could reshape reality to save this cycle of the multiverse from ending. Or maybe they're the key to restarting the multiverse after it dies. But who would die anyway? And that's the possible connection between Kang's rings, the Ten Rings, and the Bangle. But what do you think? Could this theory be true? What are your theories about the connection between the rings? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Aries. Subscribe, like this video, if you already did. Play this video, see you guys. Bye.